Hey everybody, today on Bitner Built, we're going to take my ultimate standing cart to the next level. When I was doing the video, I was kind of racking my brain on what could I do to get rid of the power cord for this guy? And it came to me, a 15 pound $500 Jackery battery system. So let's go ahead and strap this to the table and call it a day. Unfortunately, that was my first thought, uh, and then I immediately realized, well, that's pretty stupid. But then the real solution came to me, and it was something that I already had in the shop, so let's go ahead and make this cart wireless today on Bittnerville. So while I was editing the video for doing the ultimate standing desk in this shop, I was really racking my brain with how can I make this desk wireless? I can definitely say that the wire going around with the cart is an annoyance. And I've had this cart for two years or so, and I've always kind of dealt with it, but it would be really nice to have it be wireless. So my first thought was that big jackery that I had, and of course that's a, a silly idea, but then I remembered about this. And this is a battery inverter that I found on Amazon. They make it in all sorts of variations, so you can hook it up to Milwaukee batteries or Makita or Ryobi, whatever. Um, and I had bought this for a video that we're gonna be doing pretty soon. I'm building a new enclosed trailer for one of my businesses. So we're gonna do a whole series on that, and this was gonna power the lighting in the trailer. Well, this is the perfect solution for powering this desk. So basically all it is is you attach your tool battery to right here, this particular unit has a detached power switch, and I like that because then you can permanently mount it uh, into a structure, and then plug it in, and we should be able to move. I'm blindly pressing, but up oh, there we go, aha, yes. So, this works. Uh, this isn't a huge draw, so I wasn't surprised. Now, there are lots of different types of these units. There's a lot of ones where it's enclosed. It looks pretty much like this. I liked this one because I wanted to be able to hard mount it in a couple different situations. So uh, this is a, a cool idea. They all run around $40, uh, regardless of which type you buy. So let's go about figuring out how to mount this to this desk. So I've decided that I wanna put it on the side of the desk instead of putting it in the middle because I'm afraid it might interact or, or hinder the movement of this desk when I'm at my drill press. So putting it off to the side will mean that I won't hit anything. I'm gonna try and make an enclosure. Uh, I wanna make it as small as possible, so again, it limits me hitting things in that scenario. And the reason why I wanna do an enclosure is because I have a whole bunch of cables associated with this stuff, um, so uh, let's, make it prettier and hide all the cables. I would like for this to stick out so that it's accessible all the time. That way I can utilize these USB ports if I want to. But then I was looking at the plug for this desk and this plug is huge. And it creates this giant right angle um, that, you know, I don't want that sticking out. I can totally see me hitting this out so I need to find a solution where I can plug these together without making this ridiculously large shape. All right, so I figured out my solution to not have this stupid shape and to make it a little bit easier to get everything into this enclosure. And the answer is to make a very small extension cord so that these two are separated. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm using a small piece of lamp cord. This is 16-2. And I use this all the time with my Christmas light company that I own. And what we do is we make custom extension cords for things um, that we hide so that it looks like a very clean installation when I do it. And so what I'm gonna use is called a Gilbert plug. It's probably the easiest wiring thing you'll ever see. It has two little spikes inside of there. And so what I do is I split the two wires so that they're not touching. I don't want them to arc inside this plug. And I push them into a little pocket and the pocket has a divider that keeps the two ends of this separate. And so I push it in the pocket. And then when I lay the wire down on top of the plug, those two spikes pierce the plugs, or I'm sorry, the wire's sheath. And now 
once I slide a cap on, I have a male plug. And so then I do the exact same thing again at the other side. I jam the wire in, lay it down and put the cap on and boom, you have the smallest extension cable you've ever seen. And so now instead of this stupid shape, I can plug this in, I can plug this in. And now what I'll be able to do is mount this on the side of the desk, wrap this cable tightly on top of it. And you know, we'll have it like this inside the wall. And now this can just be loose inside the cabinet with all the extra wire that we have. And it's a much cleaner exterior and it still grants me access to the USB uh, ports over here if I wanna be able to use them. Okay, so I have all of my pieces rough cut for the box that I'm gonna make. I have the top. I have the side, which I'm gonna put the piano hinge on the bottom so it opens like this and it falls. And then I have this side. And this side is where the button is going to come through. This presents a difficult challenge. And that is that this unit, the wires are soldered on and then have shrink put over them. So if I cut a hole that is precisely the size uh, that I should, which is the diameter under this front plate, uh, I can't push it through. It will be too big. This button must be inserted from the front and pushed back. And since I can't get the stuff off, um, it makes a problem. So really what this does is it creates uh, a problem with two solutions. Solution number one is I cut the wires. I put it through the hole in the finished product and I solder them back together and put uh, a shrimp shrink housing on top of them. That is the difficult one, especially because this is a really short wire and you know, I hate cutting brand new stuff like that. Um, the other option means that I would have a little bit of a notch. So if I were to rest this right here or the equivalent, um, I could, on this one, cut out the, the hole that is necessary and then also cut out the wood below it. That way what I'd be able to do is slide it up into place. And then I could replace the wood in there and glue it. Um, but you would see two lines right there. All right, so let's take our little flappy door that we're gonna put on the side and put it through the CNC machine. Um, we're not gonna make anything too crazy, but I figured I'll take just a real quick second just to show you, just in case you're not familiar with the CNC machine. Um, first, I'm gonna just put in what size the wood is. So my wood is 14 by 3.75, three, and the wood is 0.75 inches thick. So now we have our piece of wood over here that'll go into the machine. I could just pick a shape like a circle and it will carve a circle. If you look at the picture over here, it shows that the circle's partially deep, but it's not all the way through. So when I select my circle, I can go to cut and I can then just drag a slider to say how deep I want it to cut. My wood's only three quarters of an inch. So if I drag it all the way to the bottom and say cut it three quarters of an inch, it cuts a hole all the way through the piece of wood. If I do something less, it will leave wood inside. Um, so if I'm doing a sign or something, I might cut it kind of shallow and then fill it with epoxy. But in this case, we're gonna make holes for ventilation. Um, now that I've done that and I have a hole, um, you know, that hole's a little bit big. I might just drag it and resize it and I can drag it anywhere I want. Then I can just copy and paste. I can make a ton of them, overlap them. I can then make different sizes but some of you have been asking questions in the comments about the CNC machine. So I figured I'd throw you a two second little clip and show you how easy it is for me to just make something like that. So I made the front facing side for the box right here. We're doing an off and on. I'm going to fill it with epoxy. The problem is this switch. And I knew this was going to be a problem. 
So honestly, the only option that I have is to cut it and then re-solder it back together again. If you're gonna do something like that, you definitely want to tape one of the wires so that you know what you're reapplying it to. Okay, so we have all of the pieces uh, cut, assembled, uh, or dry assembled, should I say. Got my little Art Deco CNC cutout right there. Have my front that I also threw some epoxy in just to be fun with. I mean, really guys, this is a box, um, so I don't wanna go too much into it. But uh, this thing now, where I had to snip it, uh, I hate this stuff. Um, I hate destroying something like this. I wish they would have thought ahead or at least made it so that I could remove this collar right here uh, to put it in and snap the collar on from the front. But we cut it, so now I need to strip these, strip the other ones, solder it back together. And of course, I need to remember that number one right here goes to the one that I left tape on over there. Okay, so the box is done. Let's think about how we're gonna do the initial mounting for it. Uh, luckily, I had some foresight before I glued this all together and I pre-sunk four screws inside here. The reason why I needed some foresight in this is that this is a really small cavity. And so if those screws were twice as long as they are now, I don't know if I'd be able to get in there to screw the thing in. So by sinking them first, I'm gonna be able to use my uh, right angle adapter, get in there tight and finish it up and put it in. When we're talking about the battery holder, that's a different story. You don't wanna just go ahead, well, First, you have different options. You could glue this if you wanted to, but I don't want it to be a permanent thing. I'd like to be able to remove it. So what you need to do is take it apart because you don't wanna just willy-nilly screw into a, an electrical component. There might be a circuit board or something in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. Okay, so I have the four screws out of this. I wanna point out that, see how this says M and B, where this blade is? Uh, it's in the Makita position, Bosch position. Uh, they're very similar batteries. So this one unit can be used for Makita or Bosch. So, voila, there's a, a circuit board on this piece. So my goal was that I could screw in here and still put this on. And that goal is definitely obtainable because you can see these posts. As long as I put my screws and the heads are beneath this post, it should be able to just immediately put this right back on, and it's great. All right, so we're gonna mount the box. And uh, if you saw my right angle drill video the other day, where I kind of left a not so positive review for a very good brand, I'll point out right now that we're in a position where we need a right angle. I could not get any manufacturer's right angle drill in here. The only thing I would be able to get in here is one of these right angle drill attachments. And so no matter what, even if you buy one of those nice ones, you really need to have this too. No! <laughs> ah! Well, I put that screw in the back there too close to the wall and I can't get close enough to get it. All right, let's get this guy on here. So what we're gonna do is slide this out. We uh, can't take it out in any way, but at least it's out of the way while I do this. You wanna make sure that you bring your battery over when you're holding it in place, click it in. This was the reason why I cut this um, a little after half. I wanted to give my hand a lot of room, but I also wanted to make sure that this is gonna be hidden under the table and not bump into anything past the perimeter of the table itself. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark it while I pre-drill this. Anyway, what I was going to say before I lost it was there is a circuit board here, so I don't want anything metal in contact with that. So looking at this plate, I wanna try and get my screws kinda of close to the posts on the sides. That way they're out of the way. So I'm gonna pre-drill this right now. Ah, uh, uh, maybe, 
Maybe, oh, okay, cool. It looks like they've indicated for me four spots where a good pre-drill would be. All right, let's roll with what they think. Cool. Isn't that so gratifying once you get the first screw in and you don't have to hold it something anymore? Oh. All right, so time to finish this up. Uh, I'm gonna be putting a piano hinge down at the bottom to make it come out like this. Cool thing is it's very snug right now. This is in here without being attached to anything. Don't even have to hold it. Um, I did not want to have to put a knob or something on this in order to open up this guy. And so in making my fun vent holes, I can just pinch right here and it will hinge down. Our last two things is to A, use our fun little power cable that we made, our extension cord, jamming that in there. And then we have the power cord that goes to the standing desk. We're gonna thread that out the back, but just barely to connect it, I wanna keep all of the slack. Oh, actually it fully goes in there, cool. Okay, I want to keep all the slack inside this box. So, what do you think, zip ties? I think zip ties because we're not going to be undoing this anytime soon. Did you guys know that I hold the world record for the most use of zip ties ever? I don't, but I did contact Guinness to see, and if Guinness wasn't ridiculously expensive, I would have, uh, when I did a big giant light show we used crates and crates and crates of zip ties for cables everywhere. Ugh. Ooh, that gives me a really great idea. There is a wonderful tool that even I didn't know about until I needed it that cuts zip ties. Super awesome. I'm gonna have to throw that in one of my videos. Okay. Now, this guy with the gimbal plug on it actually really wedges in there tight. And I could turn this plug on its side and get it in here, but I actually like how it wedges in tight because it holds everything back. And so it doesn't ever like want to push on this front door. Because of that, I'm not even going to bother putting the little clasp mechanism in here because it's taut, nothing's pushing on it. So if it ever becomes a problem, I'll put that little latch on there. But for now, I think we're good. We did it, we did it. It's free, free of its cables. That's awesome. Um, and honestly, very cheap for functionality additions. So really, let's be frank. This is a stupid easy build and it could be really easier if you wanted to. Step one, buy attachment. Step two, zip tie it to the side of the table. But we wanted to make it a little bit flashier, put our little on off button so it's more convenient in the front when I'm utilizing it. So that was part two of this amazing build. The best thing that I have in my shop that I've ever invented. And we just made it even more functional by adding battery power to it. If you have some cool ideas for this too, throw it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Maybe there will be a part three to this video as we make it more awesome. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't. If you've made it all the way to the end right now, you thought this video might have been, you know, cool, show it, join our community. We have so many amazing people already. We're only a little over a week in, and I have so many people that are commenting in the comments and being really supportive and, and throwing out great ideas to me and to each other. So that's awesome. I never expected that, and uh, it's definitely a very pleasant surprise. Stay safe in the shop, and I'll see you in the next video.